Attention! At the half step, forward, march! Present R. Order R. Right. On behalf of the members of Company F, 29th Infantry, United States Colored Troops, I would like to welcome you to this memorial service for Private William Reed. Private Reed was born on August 24, 1839. He died February 22, 1865. He was an actual member of the unit we portrayed today. The 13th Amendment to the, De to the Constitution declared that neither slavery nor involuntary servitude, except as a punishment for crime, whereof the party shall have been duly convicted, shall exist within the United States or any place subject to their jurisdiction. Formally abolishing slavery in the United States, the 13th Amendment was passed by the Congress on January 31, 1865, and ratified by the states on December 6. 1865. This was the reason. We'll now have an opening prayer. For as much as it has pleased your Almighty God to take out of the world the soul of our deceased brother, Almighty God, we remember this day before thee, thy faithful servant, and we pray that we having opened to him the gates of a larger body, thou hast received into him thy joyful service, thy, that he has won, and that thy servants have here the eternal victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. It was the 13th Amendment was the reason why Private Reed and over 175,000 of his black contemporaries joined the Union to fight for the cause of freedom. It wasn't for states' rights. It wasn't for self-determination. It was for the freedom of their children and their children's children. We don't know the circumstances of Private Reed's life after the military. We don't know the circumstances of Private Reed's death. But we do know that he served in one of the greatest armies this country has ever known. We do know that he more than likely fought at the Battle of the Crater in Petersburg, Virginia, where the Union attempted to end the war quickly by taking Richmond. We also know that Private Reed lost over 75% of the soldiers in his regiment in that engagement. We also know that it's very likely that Private Reed was at Appomattox Courthouse 
when General, uh, when General Lee surrendered to General Grant as the 29th was president. It is our honor and our duty and our privilege to provide our fallen soldier with the honor due every military man, regardless of the circumstances of their death. It is our duty to make sure that Private Reed and all the other private uh, soldiers that he represents are recognized in a fashion suitable to an American fighting man. At this time, we're going to have our 21 gun salute. Attention! Fort R. To the ready.
better community and a better nation because of William Reed's life. And in the words of Abraham Lincoln, it's a fitting and proper that we honor and remember William Reed. It's a tradition in all military funerals, especially since the Civil War, that taps be played when a soldier is buried. Just to give you a quick history of taps, it can be argued as exactly how this tune came into existence. The romanticized version of its creation, a Union officer heard a crying soldier on the battlefield. And he felt compelled to go and help that soldier. So he braved the bullets and the fire going over his head and he crawled out to that wounded soldier and he pulled him back to Union lines to find out that it was a Confederate soldier who he had just pulled to safety. Not only that, but it was his son that he had pulled to safety. His son was attending a, 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 a conservatory in the South for music. And when the war broke out, he chose that cause to fight for. The son died, and in the pocket, in his son's pocket, he found a half-completed tomb, which became past. Like I said, that's the romanticized version of it. I'll leave it up to your imagination to accept that or do research on your own. But another tradition, it wasn't at all military funerals, only those funerals where uh, someone could afford it. Not even all West Point graduates would get this particular honor done for them. And that's to have a bagpipe play Amazing Grace. So at this time, prior to the conclusion of our ceremony, we'll hear taps from our bugle. in honor to our bagpiper, Mr. Tom Cobb. Our bugler, Bugler Dell, traveled all the way from Minneapolis, Minnesota to be with us here, to be with us here today. And I would also like to say a special thank you to my, uh, I, I call it my co-defendant, and <laughs> putting this whole program together, Sergeant Prentice Jones. From 
behalf of the rest of the men and women of Company F, one of which our lovely Carla Brockman here. I would like to thank you all for joining us at this solemn occasion. And before we, before we finally close, I'd like to uh, end it with a prayer. Father God, maker of the universe and of all things holy, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the breath that we're able to take. We thank you for watching over us as we slept last night. And we thank you for watching over us and waking us up this morning. We pray that everyone present within the sound of my voice continue to have your mercy and grace as they go through the rest of the day. I pray for traveling grace for those that have to travel great distances to get back home. And I pray that you all find your homes, if not better, as they were when you left. All these things, Father, we thank and pray in the name of our precious Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for coming.